How's it going? I started my electric car conversion journey about two years ago. In this series of videos, I'm going to try and summarize the things that I've learned along the way. Full disclosure, I am not an engineer. I'm just a curious dude with absolutely no idea of what I can't do. Maybe you're equally ignorant of your limitations and want to try an electric car conversion for yourself. Or perhaps you just want to watch me fumble through the process. Either way, I'll do my best to make these videos entertaining and hopefully useful. That's enough yapping. Let's go. It's a happy day. The time has come to create the coupling that will attach the forklift motor to the Volkswagen transmission. So this fits on a gear that comes off the drive shaft of my forklift motor. And this is the clutch from the Volkswagen. So this fits on the input shaft of the transmission. So what I need to do is to take this and this and put them together like that. But I don't need all this other stuff here. In fact, these springs are in the way of lining up those holes so that it's centered. So what I'm gonna do is dismantle this guy. It's too bad, this is like a brand new clutch. So my grinder ended up being a crucial tool for this project. If you have any plans to do any kind of metal work, definitely get yourself a good grinder. There it is. That's exactly what I needed. It's perfect. Woo! -hoo. Now we make those two up. And we are in business. Both of these parts had a bit of a ridge that I needed to grind off. Did I mention the importance of having a good grinder? Oh, I did? Good. A real machine shop probably would have been able to shave these down and flatten them in a few minutes. It took me several hours, and even then it was only, you know, good enough. That's the front of my Nissan Leaf you see there in the background. I eventually had to replace the windshield because it was all pockmarked with welding splatter and grinding sparks. A real machine shop would also probably use something other than my eyeballs to verify flatness. But you work with what you got. Yes! Okay, all done. Did it. Oh, still warm. Ticket here is going to be to weld them together. I'm going to weld all around this edge. I'm going to weld all along here too. Just to get as much surface area as I can welded because this thing is going to be experiencing the entire torque of pushing that car. And one of these is going to try and spin and the other one's going to try and hold still. So they need to be fastened together extra super tight. So today's the day that I'm going to weld together the adapter. This is the piece that goes on the forklift motor. This is the piece that came from the Volkswagen clutch. Uh, this is a 3D printed guide that I made so that I could line up the centers of these two pieces uh, exactly because I want to make sure that they totally line up. They have the exact same center point when I weld them together. So that fits in there and it's pretty darn close to being right on the center. I don't know that I can find a way to make it any closer. So that's what we're going to do. I only get one shot at this and I'm not a master welder. So uh, hopefully this will go okay. <laughs> I am so glad that I had metal shop class in high school. It had been over 20 years since I did any kind of welding, but at least it gave me the confidence to buy a cheap welder and give it a go. High school metal shop didn't help me get into medical school, but it was still dang useful. So I got it welded together enough that it'll hold while I try and see how it fits in the car. Uh, I'm going to finish welding it together once I know 
for sure where I'm going to mount this and some of those things. <sighs> More kids yelling. Uh, so right now goes on there and I'm going to lower this in there and uh, see how it fits. Spoiler alert, it didn't fit. I had measured it and I knew it was going to be close. I only needed like one more inch. The easy thing to do would have been to just cut the body of the car, but I care too much for my automotive soul to ever commit such an atrocity. So I have a decision to make. I kind of knew I was going to need to shorten this. I thought maybe if I cut it, if I cut that part, it would be enough, but it isn't. So I either need to cut this and or the shaft on the transmission. If I cut the shaft on the transmission, that's a point of no return. That transmission I'd have to replace if I ever wanted to install a hyperdrive in 20 years for light speed and such, I'd have to get a new transmission. Or I'd have to take it apart and try and replace that one part, which is also not good. Um, dang. Even if I cut this way down and cut this way down, I still need to cut this transmission output shaft. Look at how far it sticks through. Maybe I could have it out that far. Um, you know what I wish I could do? I wish I could just hollow this thing out. I don't know. Not sure. There actually isn't a book that tells you how to do this. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll tell you when I know. Hollowing out the shaft of the motor seemed like a good solution. And at first, I was making progress. But after I got a couple centimeters into it, my drill bit broke. Then the second drill bit broke. Then I tried a diamond-tipped grinding bit, and that heated up and bent. Then I got out the sawzall. As you know, I like to rename things that I think are named inappropriately. In this case, the people who name things got this one right. This thing really does saw all. As long as you have a sharp enough blade. At this point, I was starting to get worried that it might never fit. I was cutting down everything I could possibly think of to shorten it. With very little regard for structural integrity. What is the right saw for something like this? Maybe one of those portable band saws? I don't know. When I sawed the gears, the edges of the teeth got all clogged up. I was pretty happy that I finally got to use some of those Dremel bits that I got for Christmas like 15 years ago. I kind of felt like a dentist. You know, like the elf from the Island of Misfit Toys? Or Steve Martin in Little Shop of Horrors. And of course, I had to do the same thing on the other gear that I'd cut. I'm probably a better amateur welder than I am amateur dentist. But in the end, as usual, it was good enough and the gears fit back together fine. Happily ever after. So the next thing to do is to cut this shaft. Now that I know the motor works, I'm confident that I can put it in this car, make it run, so I'm okay now to sacrifice this transmission. If I, once I cut this, there's no going back. I mean, I guess I could take it apart and put a new one of these in sometime, but I, would, I wouldn't do that. I would just buy a new transmission. But if I'm pretty confident that I can make this motor work in this car, which at this point I am, then I think I'm ready to go ahead and cut this off. I need to cut it off so that when the motor is up against this, when that gear is in this, I can have it pretty well flush to this. So I think I'm just going to cut it right where it starts to taper down so I can have as much of that gear as possible and then I'll probably once I put this gear on the motor where this slides in that will be sort of the maximum it'll probably be somewhere around there and that'll put it a little bit inside of flush with this from my eyeballs, what my eyeballs are telling me. 
So that should be good enough. That should fit. Finally. Okay. Let's do it. Time to cut the transmission. Woo! Bye, transmission. Probably got a lot of Volkswagen enthusiasts out there screaming, Don't do that! What are you doing? Don't cut the transmission! Yeah, well. Let's see if you can identify the most dangerous thing in this situation. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with bassatone. I used to keep a pretty clean workspace in my garage. Not so much anymore. I think you can tell a lot about a man's psyche by the condition of his garage. What was I talking about again? Ooh, that looks like dragon fire. That'll do. Woo-wee! This doesn't need to be this long. In fact, I don't need it at all. Um, I cut the other side with the saw, but since I got the grinder out, I think I'll just grind this one. No, I didn't trip the circuit breaker. I just wasn't moving enough for the motion sensor to keep the lights on. But it made for a pretty cool view of the grinding sparks. Would probably be better if I had all the right tools. I don't exactly know what the right tool would be, but I'm betting that, that this ain't it. Grinder or saw? Grinder or saw? Grinder or saw? I just couldn't decide. So now that I've got the motor so that it fits in the back of the bug, it's time to really start permitifying. <laughs> it's time to really start making things permanent. I've had this thing welded together okay, but it needs to be stronger. So the next step is to weld every possible surface so that these two gears don't ever come apart. This is going to be handling the full force of the motor trying to push the car on this piece here. So if my welds suck and this just breaks apart, we're going to be pushing. <laughs> so time to put my amateur welding skills to work. In my defense, I could hardly see what I was doing. When I bought the welding mask, I didn't know how dark I needed to get. So I just got the darkest one I could find. I have since upgraded to a much better welding helmet that I got from Harbor Freight. By the way, Harbor Freight, I'm looking for sponsors. You know, if you want to work a deal, give me a call. I love your stuff. It's all done. There it is. What do you think? Pretty crappy weld job. It, it feels quite a bit heavier than it did. That's for sure. Uh, it looks horrible. But boy, I think it's stuck together about as good as I can get it. I'm sure if I really wanted to, I could fill in all that with metal, but I don't know what that would do for us. I'm not sure it would add a lot of strength. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the way it turned out. On the shaft of the transmission now, I need to make sure that, the, that this won't slide. Because right now it only hangs on a very little bit. You can see how much of this I cut off. It only hangs on to the motor gear very little bit. And it slides way down on the transmission shaft. So if I were to put it in there and put the motor in, if I didn't line up the teeth exactly and just pushed, this would just slide right off of the teeth on the, on the motor shaft. So I need to make it stay. Uh, to do that, I thought I, maybe you could weld this on there, on the transmission shaft. But I don't think I want to do that. I think instead I'd rather um, maybe just put a couple of bumps with the welder on the transmission shaft. So this will still slide on and off, but when it hits those weld spots on the transmission shaft, it won't go on any further, and it won't be able to come off of the gear on the motor. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like the book says, this is exactly how you do it according to the book. <laughs> There's no book. So this is what I'm talking about. If I just push this, it'll slide all the way on there until this shaft is coming out. And that'll be too far for the motor gear to fit. So I'm going to pull it back a little ways, somewhere in there. 
so I still get maximum transmission shaft engagement with the gear inside and then and then put just some spot welds back here not to hold this on just to give it some bumps so that it can't slide back any farther hopefully that'll work reaching in there and getting the welds in the right spot was kind of tricky I'm not sure I actually hit the mark that I made but eh, good enough in the next video I'll go through how I made the adapter plate to bolt the transmission to the motor. As most things I make, it could use some improvements, but it's good enough. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, drum roll. All right, I did it. Check this out, I'm gonna spin the motor, and there goes the transmission. Woo -hoo -hoo! That's an electric car, baby. That's it, right there. Yahoo! I'm just gonna keep on spinning this because it makes me happy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, yes. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description, or head over to Patreon, or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.